Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa Welcome for Material Science Lab session number 7. Inshallah, today we are going to learn about hardness testing. What is hardness testing and why we need it? So far, we have been doing many uh, tests like tensile tests, Sharpie impact tests, fatigue tests, and, and those tests, tests are uh, used for using uh, the uh, measuring the properties of materials and also to find out what how the material is behaving under certain conditions okay so hardness is uh, likewise another very important property of material which we are going to measure for three different samples inshallah again uh, and those three samples are the same as we tested in the tensile and in the charpie impact uh, in no in the charpie we only focus on steel so as in the tensile we tested steel aluminium and brass again we are going to test for this week uh, steel aluminium and brass but for hardness let's see how much is their hardness so what is hardness let me ask you the hardness is a measure of resistance to plastic deformation induced by either mechanical indentation or abrasion okay so it is uh, very important to know uh, if you have experience in your life sometimes when you drop your phone on the road or on any floor uh, your mobile phone if you drop it on the floor sometimes you can scre see a scratch on your screen while sometimes you drop it and you don't see any scratch what happens is that the if if the screen touches a material so your screen is already very hard this screen of your mobile phone is designed so it so it, it has very good hardness in itself so if uh, another material which is less hard than the screen is used to scratch it it will not get the scratch why for example our nail has very less hardness while our screen has very high hardness so if you scratch it with your nail it will not get the scratch but if you take a steel key and try to scratch it maybe it will get the scratches why because steel is harder than your screen and then it can scratch so diamond as you know is the hardest material uh, and why we call it the hardest material because if you take the diamond and you make it a sharp uh, edge of the diamond and use it to scratch anything you will get the scratch on that that's why in order to cut the glasses for our houses we cut the glass for attaching anything the a diamond cutter is used so a diamond cutter is used to scratch the glass and then if you pull it it will break uh, cut the piece of glass out of it so hardness uh, by scientific definition is measure of resistance to pla uh, to something plastic deformation induced by either mechanical indentation or abrasion what is abrasion abrasion is what this guy is doing with the key on his phone can you see this this is you are uh, scratching abrasion is basically scratching so scratching okay so uh, uh, abrasion is scratching while um, uh, resistance to what what comes in this bar is this i'll tell you in this dash uh, hardness is a measure of resistance to localized that's very important localized plastic deformation if you remember we were pulling the sample in tensile test and there was plastic deformation in the sample that was the plastic deformation in all of the sample in itself so the whole cross section area has the plastic deformation but in the hardness what we do is we take a piece of metal and we use a, a small pin or a ball to just push only one small part of your sample not all of it only one small part that's why it is called localized okay localized so i want you all to write uh, in the chat hardness is resistance to localized plastic deformation okay it's uh, i want you to look at the handouts and maybe try writing it from here hardness is resistance to localized plastic deformation hardness is resistance to localized plastic deformation thank you so much all right now uh, what we can do here is um, there are many types of, of um, you can do uh, many types of hardness tests some are indentation some are scratch some are rebound 
so why we need to measure the hardness that's an important question why we need to measure hardness question this is again as I told you so your f uh, it's for your screens so not they don't get scratched if the screen is made up of plastic glass plastic clear coat it will get a lot of scratches but if it is made of, of hard material or maybe with a hard coating it will not get a scratch very easily again the brake how does the brake of your car works it works by touching one hard material with another so that there is resistance and your car stops so it is very important application uh, the hardness is very important property which needs to be uh, carefully uh, understood by the engineers in order to design certain applications okay so what does indentation means okay let me tell you what does indentation mean indentation okay so what as I told you localized is just pushing plastic deformation at one point of the sample not all of it so if you this is your sample the gray color you use a small pen or a pin so just to push only a small part in your sample that's it so you don't press or pull the whole thing no you just pull one small part of it and you measure how much force I put how much hole it make and this force and hole will tell you the resistance for localized plastic deformation localized means at one point only okay so uh, localized means at one point only so what is it saying it says localized force so only a small point force is used to apply by an indenter so the pin or the pen which is used to make hole in the sample not hole a point a spot is called indenter okay indenter indenter means making a dent so when you when you have hit your car by someone a dent is formed in your car so uh, the thing which is used to make a dent is called indenter okay um, localized force is applied by an indenter on the material surface to promote indentation so a small uh, indenter is used to make a hole on the uh, a spot indentation on the sample so uh, I hope you understand what does indentation means so indentation is the process of making localized small hole or a spot using an indenter okay indenter so there is uh, confusion I guess but I hope it, I, it will clear out there are many types of um, hardness testing available for us so there's many types you can test how how much a material is hard but I want you to remember hardness is always a comparison measure okay so you always compare one material with another material to know the hardness number it cannot be on itself by itself like in the Sharpie impact you hit the sample and it gives you energy each material has its own energy but for hardness you need to compare something with something because the pin or the indenter you will use to make the spot on your sample is of course made up of some material so what will happen if this pin is soft and this material is hard it will not make the hole in the in the sample it's again story it, if the uh, indenter should always be very hard material and then your sample comes in okay so there is many types of hardness testing Burnell, Rockwell, Vickers, Noop so in this lab inshallah today we are going to look at Burnell and Rockwell hardness testing we will use three materials and we will test their hardness using Burnell hardness and Rock, uh, Rockwell hardness testing okay so I want you to write it in the chat so write here uh, Burnell and Rockwell hardness test can you write it Burnell and Rockwell hardness test Brunel and Rockwell hardness test. Brunel and Rockwell hardness test. It's very important to remember the names because the unit of hardness is also in their name. The unit of hardness, if you measure by Brunel, is BHN, Brunel hardness number. And also for Rockwell, it is uh, Rockwell scale. So hardness Rockwell measure, okay? So what is the benefit of hardness test? So how is it good or bad? So that's the question. What is the benefit of hardness test? 
it is easy and very quick it will not take more than one minute to finish your test it's very small it is very inexpensive and non-destructive yani you don't need to destroy the whole sample as it was in tensile test you pull it and it's broken no you can take any machine part and do the hardness test may be applied to sample of various dimension and shapes so you can take any size of the sample it does not matter because the pin is using only one small spot to work on it okay so uh, before going into the actual test of Brunel and Rockwell hardness let me show you this uh, image here this is another hardness unit it's called Mohs hardness scale but I want I am sharing this just for your uh, imagination what does the hardness means if you see your fingernail let's assume your fingernail has a hardness of 2.5 okay and uh, quartz quartz is the material we use to make the glass and also if you know uh, the watches the hand watches the rich watches the glass of the hand uh, the wrist watches is usually made up of quartz material why the quartz had a hardness number of seven so if you use your nail which is hardness number of 2.5 and try to scratch quartz which is hardness number of 7 so this is what I mean I use my nail to scratch the quartz hardness it can never get a scratch why because my nail is very soft and this quartz glass is very hard so that will make sure maybe it will get less scratches but what will get quartz how your uh, quartz will get scratch maybe if you put a lot of force using steel nail because now you are coming closer to quartz 7 and 6.5 or a drill bit so in a drill machine uh, the drill bit has a hardness of 8.5 they make it really hard because the drill bit is used to make holes inside the wall inside the steel everywhere else so that's why uh, hardness uh, is very important to measure when you are designing something for example if you if you design a knife so you need to make sure this knife is able to cut through different fruits different maybe coconut on hard fruits and items then you need to make sure it has a good hardness number and here there are different elements maybe you know some of them so quartz is a glass diamond you can see has a hardness number of 10 so it is on the top if you even want to cut anything uh, like a drill bit nail knife penny anything you can use a diamond to cut it very easily because it is the hardest material um, we know as of now okay so that's a good comparison scale so again at the very soft we have talc and this is the talcum powder you if you remember the talcum powder we use um, uh, for uh, makeup and these things this is very soft material and it has a hardness of one so it's coming from this element rock called talc so that's just a comparison uh, for you I uh, hope it interests you and now let's come to the tests Bernal hardness test is number one which we will do then number two we will do is the Rockwell hardness test the Rockwell is easy you just put the sample take the number but the Bernal needs some calculation and that's why it is important to understand what is your lab report about so let me show you now uh, let's take a break from the theory and show you how much is the uh, what is the lab report about okay lab report so in your lab report uh, this lab report luckily is all done on computer so it's you have to type it on Microsoft words because there's a lot of pictures you will put in this one and you will start the lab report usual it's, it's the usual one but a little bit more detail this time write in detail about what is material hardness why it is important in the fields of material engineering you should survey literature and, and include at least two references so I need two references for your introduction to be here and I will check if you take the information from these references or not do not copy paste the information try to paraphrase it and then here write the objectives of this lab so here in this lab we are going to learn about uh, two hardness me testing methods and we are going to check the hardness of different materials so the objectives I want you to write appropriately lab materials what are the equipments and the materials we use so some of you forget to put materials materials is the brass aluminum and the cup and the steel uh, the items we use okay 
equipment is the machinery and the, any safety items we use here I want you to again put the photos of lab procedure with step-by-step -step explanation do not put a big explanation I see some of uh, you put a lot of wording in the procedure the points is also okay with me and each stage of Brunel and Rockwell hardness testing should be measured here mentioned here make sure you highlight safety precautions and also explain how you selected load and indenter size why I put this because you might you can maybe skip this uh, in order to do the hardness test you need to first select the indenter and the load for which you are going to apply on the sample so your procedure should show me how did you select the load and indenter size okay so this is done with photos of lab procedure please make sure you take photos from the lab video which I shared with you not from another source okay thank you that's lab procedure so um, introduction four marks done objectives two marks lab material two marks and then procedure six marks coming up next is the results in this one attach photos of sample with indentation so when you make the localized plastic deformation on the sample yani when you make a spot on your sample I want you to take the screenshot of that and clearly visible by red circle so when you put the sample one picture here make sure you make a circle on the spot where it is created the plastic deformation okay for both Brunel and Rockwell test so you will have three pictures here and you will have three pictures here but with the circles very important okay this is just picture of your sample and here you have to get the test data so what is your test data test data is the results you, you will get from the test so mention the test readings in the form of table so what I have done is already created for you a table so it's easier for you to organize just here you need to put the material names steel aluminum and brass and here P means load so for Brunel you need P which is load you need the capital D which is the uh, the, or the diameter of indenter ball and this is the small d okay this is mistake here please fix it the small d is the size of the spot you will create on the sample so after you create the spot on the sample you measure it using microscope and that's the size you will put here it says average values because here you need to create average of the two readings we do here you will do calculation to find the hardness number and here you just write the hardness number directly for Rockwell you just need to sh tell me the ball size which is the same for all and the load which is not the same for all then you will just put the scale which is either HRA, B, C and then Rockwell hardness value directly from the machine okay yes everything will be there in the video so you just need to see w which data to pick and put it in the test data here okay remember so that's the test data uh, let me let me change this heading to observations because this is pictures observations because this is pictures of your sample okay that's done now moving on uh, after you put the test data that's the you will have just simple discussion questions there is only two questions you need to answer but the marks are four so make sure you answer these questions fully and in the end you have to write the conclusion in the conclusion don't forget there is an additional question given an ad application where hardness test is important so here you need to explain to me any application where hardness test is required any application so question number one here is from the results of the two tests so Brunel and Rockwell compare between both so you need to tell me the comparison between the both tests which test can produce more hard uh, accurate results Brunel or Rockwell why question number two is estimate the tensile strength for all materials so the three materials from the hardness number we can get the tensile uh, strength so I want you to use the online conversion tables which are given by the link in the PowerPoint and compare the tensile test from tensile tensile strength from the hardness number with the tensile results from the lab number four if you remember and tell me what is the difference if your lab number four tensile results were wrong because uh, as we seen in most of the lab uh, the test results were not accurate 
So make sure you can get it from any literature reference. You can get it from any literature reference if your tensile results were wrong. Okay, and compare and ch tell me here uh, why the results were different. That's it. So errors here. And in the end here, you will give the two references for the introduction or any things you take from the discussion. Okay, everyone understood the lab report. The lab report is similar to what you have been doing. So I, I did not bring anything new. So you just need to put introduction, objectives, lab equipment, procedure with photos. And then you have to put photos of the sample of the testing uh, after making the plastic deformation or the spots. Then you put the test data, which is just the numbers you will take from the video and put it here and uh, do some calculation to find the hardness number. Then you will take uh, answer the discussion questions. There is only two questions there. And lastly, you will uh, make write the conclusion, which will be uh, uh, which will be the um, summary of all the work that you do. And in the end, write the references for the introduction here. Okay, you can see the references has two marks this time, uh, and this one uh, uh, is the is the is is very important because I asked in the introduction from you to go to literature and find uh, the references here. So that's the lab report. Uh, I hope you understand this. Let's come to the Brunel hardness test. Let me take a break, and all of you can also relax before we go and read what is Brunel hardness test. Okay, I think we can start with Brunel hardness test now. Uh, for Brunel hardness test, if you can see the machine here in front of you, I'll show you a video also which will be in detail, but have a look at the machine. This is very important. The machine has a round table which is here. This On this table you put your sample. It can be this watch also. Just put it there. That's it. And then on this, on the top part here, you attach the indenter. The indenter are coming in different sizes and shapes, remember. So uh, you need to select a certain indenter. And also, if you can see at the back here of the machine, you can see round uh, weights which are put there. And there is one weight at the bottom here also. I put it here just for reference. So these weights are used to load the machine because you need to put the indenter on the material by how much force this is the weight you will put here. So uh, this is the Brunel hardness test once you uh, once you select the correct weight and you put the indenter and you put the sample you just pull down this lever and then the machine will make the test and give you the sample after it has made the spot on the sample. So um, what we have here these are these are the summer summary of the steps of the hardness test we will go in detail now but a summary is this so as per sample so as, as the sample type because the, each sample will have a different weight so you have to adjust the load so this is the load you will put at the back side you have to select and fix the indenter indenter is the pin which is used to make hole inside the item then you place the sample on the machine table, pull the start test lever, so you just pull it down. The machine will apply a load for 30 seconds. So you need to keep the machine loading for 30 seconds. Then you, you, remove, you remove the sample, easy. And after that, you have to measure the size of indentation spot on by microscope. So remember, after you remove the sample, it will have a small circular spot. You need to go and look in through the microscope to check how much is the diameter of this spot. Calculate the hardness by formula. So you just need to put the data in formula to get the answers. Okay? These are the general steps of Bernal hardness test. To give you in more detail about this one, before we will go to make the steel test, but let me give you more detail. The load value can be selected based on material type. It can be 250, 500, 700, 1000, 1500 3000 kilograms because if it is hard material it needs more load how do you get this load value you get this load value by a formula which is this p over d square equals to 30 this d square is the indenter ball diameter and p is the load value which you will calculate for ferrous materials ferrous means steel or iron any material which contains iron so for ferrous materials, the P over D ratio should be 30. 
And for non-ferrous materials, non-ferrous materials means aluminum, brass, copper, any other materials which does not contain iron, Fe. The P over D ratio should be 5. Okay, there is a logic behind it, but in, uh, scientists have done many hardness tests before coming up with this formula or this rule for doing the hardness test. So if you look at this picture here, the load applied is P, the indenter diameter, so indenter, the pin which is going to make hole inside your uh, sample has a small ball at the end. You can see this one. That ball size is the D, capital D. And the small d is the size of the hole or the spot it will create on your sample. So this is the pin diameter or the indenter diameter. This is the indentation diameter or the defect or the spot diameter after creating the defect. So indenters can also be selected. There are many types of indenters. There is steel ball which has a hardness of 450 and there is tungsten carbide ball which has a hardness number of 600. How do you select the indenter? You need to select the indenter based on the material you are testing. If you are testing diamond for sure you cannot use these indenters. It needs to be a harder indenter. The indenter diameter are also available in many types. There is 1.25, 2.5, 5 and 10 millimeter. You select it as you like it based on a certain type of material. We will show you in the video how we select. The load applied is only 15 seconds so you will push this indenter on the sample for 15 seconds then the indentation diameter is measured by microscope manually and then it is converted to Bernal hardness number BHN by a formula which is this one so the formula is also very simple and straightforward it is the load which you, you, you will apply divided by half by capital D which is the indenter diameter hold on indenter diameter and then under root, hold on, then under root, again indenter diameter minus the indentation diameter or the spot diameter. So let's watch the video to make it more clear for this one and inshallah we'll test the three samples for this one using Bernal hardness. I want you to listen carefully. Welcome for material science for hardness testing. Today we are going to test the hardness of three materials using Brunel and Vickers hardness testing machine. What you see in front of you is a Brunel hardness testing machine. We have here a rotating table and we are, this is the place we will keep the sample and here we will attach the ball indenter which is... Okay now let me close my video also. Okay. I hope the things will get clear. So, uh, used to create a Brunel hardness testing machine. We have here a rotating table, and we are, this is the place we will keep the sample. And here we will attach the ball indenter, which is used to create plastic deformation, localized plastic deformation on your sample. So, the ball indenter looks like this there is a ball here which goes down which goes the ball indenter goes down and presses against this piece of metal and creates an indentation in the metal can you see this this is the sample and this is the indenter the indenter has a ball and this ball diameter can change which which tells us how uh, how much is the hardness of material so let's continue with this test the three materials we are going to test today are steel aluminum and the brass you can see the materials have been cut to make these discs like shape so the ball indenter or the pin can make deformation plastic deformation in the sample in the flat surface we need to make sure the surface are flat so the three materials we are going to test are steel aluminum and brass and we will test them using both Brunel and uh, Rockwell hardness testing machine these are called indenters. Indenters are the pins or the points which are used to create plastic deformation. What you see on your right here is the 5 millimeter indenter. You can see the ball here it has 5 millimeter diameter. The material of this ball is made up of steel but we have also different types of indenters with different diameters, different material 
there can be tungsten carbide ball or steel there is many types depending on the type and size of the indenter we will calculate the hardness using the Brinell hardness uh, testing formula okay this is the 10 millimeter ball indenter and we use 5 millimeter balls for ferrous materials ferrous materials uh, is the is containing iron steel so this is the important information 5 millimeter for ferrous remember and we use the 10 millimeter ball for indenter for non ferrous materials the non ferrous materials is aluminum and brass there is a reason behind this i want you to explore it on your own but um, a in a nutshell uh, it depends on how much is the ductility and other factors of strength in this in addition each uh, of the materials for example steel will require a different load depending on our calculation as i will explain in the lecture this steel will have a different load so we can change different loading on the our Brunel testing machine using different loads which we can apply in the machine i'll show you the location now here on the machine backside area we can apply different loads for the material we are going to test so now this machine is loaded with 250 uh, kilograms is the weight of this rod and then we have added one 250 um, a kilogram of one weight and then another 250 so total becomes 750 the 750 kilograms is uh, testing for steel sample so let's continue with the testing of hardness for our steel sample now uh, one more thing I forgot to mention uh, we also have after the after the test after the ball has make an indentation on your sample we need to measure how much is the diameter of the deformation we uh, or the uh, how much is the diameter of the mark here we can do this by using different microscopes here we have a microscope here and inside this microscope we can see there is a graduated ruler if you can see through the mic in this one i hope it's possible it's not uh, inside if uh, we, we put this microscope above our sample and measure the uh, the size of the defect formed by the indenter let's continue with the test of steel sample in the Brunel hardness testing machine first step is we switch on the machine okay now we load the sample uh, no load the indenter here the operator reduces the length of table and installs the indenter in the indenting position that okay remember this was five millimeter indenter right yes and then he puts the sample and also we gradually place the sample in this location it is very important to wear your safety glove and all the safety for, uh, protective equipment then we adjust the table by rotating this uh, wheel to make sure that the sample is almost touching the top part or the indenter almost touching without any load so this one after we can see it is touching only we can proceed with our test after the sample is ready in position we can gradually press this lever and then the test will start the, the indenter will go inside the steel by the load which we have applied and create a mark here we have to apply the load for 15 seconds remember and then we can remo uh, remove the sample you can see in the sample here you can see in the sample here there is a circular defect that is formed on the surface this is the defect we will measure the diameter for but in order to make sure the reading is safe we will take three different values so uh, or two different values let's take it another value just to make sure we have the right we'll adjust the table then we will press down the lever and the machine will press on the sample here and this will be hold for 15 seconds approximately and then we can release it ok 
okay now we have two defects and we can measure their diameter okay now our now our sample is re now our sample is ready for the examination we will take the microscope and we will measure the size of the indentation formed on the surface of the material and so already you can see i think one of them is a little bit bigger the other one is a little bit smaller this can happen this variation because as you know the microstructure of the material is not uniform maybe or maybe the near the edge it has m m less different grain size than the in the middle it depends on the microstructure but this is the pictures i want you to put in the lab report but make sure you put a red circular area to mark the spots this is the this is called indentation the holes you make or the spots you make on the sample is called indentation okay the material and this is measured by putting the microscope here on the surface and looking through the glass we can see there is already marks for two millimeter three millimeter here which will tell me how much is the diameter of the indentation here okay okay using the microscope the measurement I have done the measurement and now I am telling you how much was the size so remember this carefully of first sample we have measured and also for the first indentation mark the measurement is coming up to be 2.1 millimeters and the indentation second one we are getting the measurement as 2.05 millimeter okay this is the two readings for the steel sample we measured using Brunel hardness testing method and using 5 millimeter indenter. Thank you. Okay, now I will go ahead and do the same for uh, br brass and aluminum samples. But before that, let me uh, show you uh, the, the process of why we choose this diameter sizes. So, in the steel testing, as I told you, the formula is P by 2, B by D or the load divided by the diameter is 30 for ferrous materials so uh, what I did is I selected 5 millimeter steel ball we can select 10 also it doesn't matter but if you select 10 you have to apply more load I think or something like this so um, I selected 5 millimeter steel ball with this much hardness and then the indentation diameter sorry indenter diameter is 5 millimeter because this is the smaller indenter I have then I put 5 here so 5 and 5 becomes 25 and the, the the P by D formula is 30 so if I take the D square on this side my P value will be how much let's calculate so P is equals to 30 multiplied by 5 square which is the indenter diameter my load value will be 750 kilogram that's why I put 750 kilogram in the machine remember if I put the indenter diameter to be uh, if I put my indenter diameter to be uh, 10 millimeter my load will be how much can you calculate for me uh, can you calculate and write the answer in the chat so right here if I put if I put uh, 10 millimeter indenter what is my load value no hala it's not uh, 10 it is having a square here can you see it is how much can you write it in the chat the answer the calculation so this is 30 multiplied by 10 square which is uh, which is a big number I think yes that's the 3000 yes true so then my value over here will be 3000 so putting 3000 kilo at the back of the machine is very difficult because you can see I put I have to put so many weights at the back in order to make the load 3000 so in order to avoid that what I did is I used 5 millimeter indenter which reduced my load to 750 kilograms and made my life easy did you understand I hope you understand this so um, I hope you understand this uh, so we apply 750 kilogram load for 15 seconds the indentation diameter measured from microscope was how much 2.1 millimeter and 2.1505 millimeter 
and then I use the Bernal hardness formula to get the value. So what is the Bernal hardness formula? This is the Bernal hardness formula, which will give us the final Bernal hardness value. That's it. So what I want from you in the lab report is take the average of the indentation. So if the first value is 2.1 and the second value is uh, 2.05, you have to take the average of them. Just take the average of them and write the final indentation value here. And then use the Bernal hardness formula for this. Okay? Good. Because the rest of the things will remain the same. That was the steel testing for using uh, for hardness using Bernal hardness. So le let's go for the aluminium. So well, let's see what al in the aluminium what we do. Or uh, in the brass what we do. We will do the brass in the video now. Thank you. Now repeating the same procedure for the brass sample. We have the brass sample ready with us. This brass sample we will use in order to measure the hardness at again two points and getting the diameter of the indention. But for this one we need to replace the indenter because this is now non-ferrous material. What we will do is we will replace the indenter. Five millimeter indenter is removed and we will put the 10 millimeter indenter as recommended by Brunel testing method. So this one is a 10 millimeter ball. Can you see this? Now this is a bigger ball size. Why we put 10 millimeter? Why we put 10 millimeter? I'll tell you now. So if you go to the brass testing, the P by D formula for non-ferrous material is P by D multiplied by 5. Okay? Because this is 5 now, we can select 10 millimeter. Because if you check the formula, indenter diameter is 10 millimeter. Yeah, we can uh, put this to be uh, uh, we can put this to be 5 multiplied by 10 square which will be 500 kilogram so I can put 500 kilogram at the back of the machine that is simple so that's why I used 10 millimeter indenter bigger size but uh, for the steel here it was 30 that's why uh, the load was becoming 3000 too high uh, so so we used smaller uh, we wanted to bring the load smaller so it makes my life easy so now that's why I used 10 millimeter here non-ferrous made up of steel for non-ferrous material which is brass so also another point we need to focus on is to change the load at the back of machine now we need to reduce the load by 250 to make it 500 so the load required in this machine is, uh, for the non-ferrous material is 500 kilograms here at the back so after we have changed the load after we have changed the indenter to make it um, 10 millimeter indenter we can put our sample of brass and get two indentation marks for measuring the hardness let's continue the first thing we will do is rotate the table to make sure the sample is touching the uh, the ball so after making sure the ball is touching the sample fully we can press the lever of machine and start the test now the machine is going to gently press down on the sample and this is the load of 500 applied here on the ball for 15 seconds approximately after 15 seconds we will close this now the load is removed and we gently re remove the table and we can see the indentation mark here you can see this is a little bit bigger size because the ball size was bigger let's take another reading while we are here for the second reading again the table is adjusted to touch the ball and we press the lever and then we wait for 15 seconds for the ball to make indentation on our sample brass sample now we release the lever and we can re uh, remo uh, bring the table down and inspect our sample now the sample is inspected to have another indentation now we have two indentations here we have uh, we have brought our brass sample back to our microscope examination and it's the same procedure repeating so i hope it will refresh the previous test also for you and here we will using this optical microscope for we will measure the sample indentation size and this this first mark was measured to be around 2.4 millimeter 
and the second one is measured to be around 2.45 millimeter this is the diameter of the indentation we can measure from the microscope in the brass sample thank you repeating the same test for aluminium now okay so this is just a repetition now we will repeat the same procedure for aluminum sample but this time also we are using that 10 millimeter ball in dental size and the load is 500 and now we can bring the table up for making the hardness testing. Repeating the test for the second time. So what do you think the whole class? What will be the diameter size in the aluminum sample? Bigger than brass or smaller than brass? Can you answer in the chat? Okay. What do you think? What do you think the uh, the size of the whole uh, the size of indentation in the aluminium sample will be bigger than brass or smaller than brass? While we all know that aluminium is ductile, more ductile, and the brass is brittle. So yes, excellent. The uh, I want you all to write here. It's bigger than uh, the brass. Okay, bigger. That's good. So thank you. You are now, I think, officially good materials engineers because you can understand for aluminium, it is more ductile, it is softer than the brass because you saw in the uh, tensile test, brass was showing very less plastic deformation and the aluminium was very ductile. So because of that, the indentation here will also be bigger. Let's check in the microscope reading. Now releasing the load. Now we have two marks here and the sample is ready for microscope examination. Okay, now the third sample which is aluminum is tested in the microscope and the first indentation mark is found out to be 3.2 millimeters while the second indentation is found out to be 3.15 millimeters. So you can see it became into 3 millimeters range, significantly bigger than the brass. Why I did not compare it with the steel because in the steel we use smaller ball diameter so it's no point of comparing that. But for the brass, yes, it is bigger than the brass. This is the reading for the Brunel hardness testing. We can see the three samples tested using Brunel hardness testing for the uh, and after the hardness marks this is the testing of samples which we will be using now you use the formula of Brunel hardness for calculating the hardness of these three materials okay so the video was very clear I think you all understood how the Brunel hardness test was done so in the Brunel hardness test also in the aluminum we did the same uh, applied the low the D indenter diameter was 10 and we applied the load of 500 kilograms for 15 seconds and then we got the diameter so I want you to take average of those diameters and find and calculate the BHN number the aluminium hardness okay that's all in the Brunel hardness test and the three samples are tested I want you to write these three tests data I, I hope now you understand this table very well you have to write the material for example steel and then you have to apply uh, write the load how much was the load we applied the 750 kg and how much is the initial diameter of indenter we used so in this steel we used 5 millimeter indenter and um, 5 millimeter ball indenter and then the D is the average values of the two readings so reading number one plus reading number two and you have to divide them by two to get the average value of the readings 
for the uh, fi from the microscope so this is the microscope readings you have to write the average value here then you can find the calculation here so BHN for steel uh, you can find it here by using the formula so the formula is given there also and once you get the un final answer you have to write it here so this is the final answer you have to write maybe the hardness value is 75 or maybe the hardness value is 80 uh, so you have to write the final value here and the same for aluminum and the same for brass easy I hope you understand this how you will put the test data here now coming up for the Rockwell hardness testing which is another type of hardness testing this will be a little bit simpler because you will take the measurements directly before proceeding with Rockwell hardness testing let's take a one minute break okay after finishing with the Rockwell hardness test we can start the uh, after finishing with the Brunel hardness test which we just did we can proceed with the Rockwell hardness test now this Rockwell hardness test is a little bit simpler it's kind of following the same procedure if you can see as per sample we need to adjust the load so this is the same as Brunel select the and fix the indenter so in this case also we will fix the indenter place the sample on the machine but here I want you to remember here in this case we will choose the same indenter for brass and uh, steel, aluminum and steel we will not change the indenter once we choose the indenter size that's it we will fix this for all three samples place the sample on machine table press the start test lever machine will apply load for 30 seconds so it's the same as Brunel the machine so now this is the different part machine will automatically measure the depth of indentation so the depth of indentation is measured in this case if you remember in the Brunel the diameter of the indentation was measured by the microscope and this we have to look manually from our eyes but in the Rockwell hardness testing the depth of indentation is used as a measure to compare hardness so which one is more accurate you can decide and also this depth is automatically measured by the machine and the machine is very accurate so hardness number is displayed automatically directly in the machine so you don't need to do anything you will just take the hardness number write it in your report okay so uh, let's give you some more detail uh, if, if you can see the machine also looks similar to uh, Brunel hardness machine you put the sample here it, it gives apply the load and gives you hardness number in the display automatically so but before taking the hardness the Rockwell hardness test I want you to uh, understand the whole concept okay the concept of Rockwell hardness test is like this you have different scales if you remember the Brunel hardness was measured as BHN and in the Rockwell it is measured as HR hardness uh, Rockwell but there is different scales for it it can be A it can be B it can be C why it depends on something let's talk about this so the scales A to G specify the load and type of indenter so the load you apply and the type of indenter you use is depend on which scale you are using for hardness measurement okay if I show you by example here the Rockwell hardness test if you use a ball in the indenter so it's the same as a Brunel round one you have different size for them it can be 1 by 16 it can be 1 by uh, uh, 1 by 8 1 by 4 depend and the load so if the ball is circular this is called Rockwell B so HRB and if the ball is conical or it's like a triangle pin it is spherical diamond tripped cone at 120 degree angle it is measuring if you can see uh, in the Brunel test we were measuring this is Brunel we were measuring the diameter by microscope how much is the diameter, diameter of indentation but in the Rockwell you can see we are measuring the depth of indentation this is the depth how much deep the sample go by a plastic deformation so which one is more accurate you can find out so this one is the depth so if by conical you use and you measure the depth it is called the Rockwell C so how much load you are applying here you can see 60 kilogram 100 kilogram 150 kilogram 100 160 150 so the load is can be 60 100 or 150 but with each 60 100 or 150 you can use 
diamond spheroconical type of indenter 1 by 16 inch diameter ball or steel sphere indenter 120 degree diamond spherical or again 1 by 8 inch diameter so depending on indenter you select and the load you apply you can choose the scale of the Rockwell hardness testing in our case for our sample we are going to use uh, the ball indenter 1 by 16 so for sure we will look for either HRB because this is using ball indenter and whatever what else is using ball indenter this one HRF 1 by 16 inch diameter ball indenter and HRG 1 by 16 inch diameter so uh, the I want you to write it in the chat I want you to write it in the chat Rockwell hardness scales depend on load and type of indenter okay Rockwell hardness scales depend on load and type of indenter Rockwell hardness scales very important so this is what I want you to write Rockwell hardness scales because uh, this is the scales which you will measure because it's always a comparison between two Rockwell hardness scales depends on load and type of indenter this is the first line I am writing here okay remember Rockwell hardness scales depend on load and type of indenter very good very good so I want you all to write this Rockwell hardness scales depend on load and type of indenter all of you please write it in the chat because this is your in lab activity 1% score thank you so uh, again this is the same story here as previous ones uh, uh, that's this one I want you to write it here okay that's the uh, here uh, after you know this Rockwell hardness scale depends on load and type of indenter we can proceed with the uh, with the Rockwell test but before proceeding with the Rockwell test, I will also, okay, that's, we will decide, decide later. So let's proceed with the Rockwell test and, uh, and we will know more about this now. I will close my video. Okay. So the Rockwell hardness test, thank you for writing it in the chat. <clears throat> so let's start writing uh, this one. Uh, reading more about the Rockwell hardness test. This is a simpler one. Okay, we will do now the Rockwell hardness testing using this machine. This machine has automatic measuring of depth which will tell us how much is the hardness directly by giving us the number in this display. So all we have to do is to put the right indenter which is here and this in this case you can see this indenter has a really small ball because it is 1 by 16th of an inch. It's here. It's inside this one. You can see this one. Is for Rockwell testing, the indenter is very small to look into. You can see the indenter size is very small. This is 1 by 16th of an inch. And here it is also steel ball. We have different scales in the Rockwell hardness testing as explained in the lecture. HRA, HRB, HRC and they depend on the indenter type and also the load we are going to apply and the load will vary depending on the sample we are going to test in this case we will test the same three samples and let me explain you the samples now okay the samples we are going to test today are again the same in Rockwell hardness testing steel aluminum and brass what we can see for the steel which is a ferrous material the for the load we are going to apply is 100 kilogram force which uh, using the 1 by 16 indenter which is again hrb scale okay hrb scale how did this scale came in let's check the rule says ferrous materials the load should be 100 kilogram non ferrous materials the load should be 60 kilogram so here if you check the 100 kilogram for steel 100 kilogram is here 100 kilogram is here 100 kilogram is here so if we use 1 by 16 inch indenter which in the case we are doing we will measure the hardness by HRB scale but if we use 120 degree diamond spheroconical so the triangular or the conical tip 
with 100 kilogram it will be HRD and if you use 1 by 8 inch diameter steel it will be HRE so in this case we are using HRB and the machine knows automatically it will select automatically the HRB scale when we will put it in the 100 kilogram force for aluminum which is non-ferrous we are going to use 60 kilogram force using the same indenter 1 by 16 and the f and this is called HRF scale and also for brass we are going to use 60 kilogram force which is again HRF scale so let's see how did he became bring HRF scale HRF has 60 kilogram force over the load and 1 by 16 inch diameter so here we, we are using HRF for the brass and aluminum samples okay let's continue for all the three samples we will take two points reading in order to make sure we have the right um, uh, value of each one of them let's continue with our test for the first sample which is steel the lab instructor puts the sample on the hardness testing machine table then we adjust the table by rotating this wheel to make sure the sample is just about to touch the sam uh, the hold on let me just adjust indenter is just touch the sam uh, the indenter is just about to touch the sample here you can see there was a small beep sound this beep sound means that the sample is now touching the table uh, or, or the indenter is touching the sample let's hear it again indenter is just about to touch the sample here it will come later also once the indenter is touching the sample after making sure the sample is touching the table we need to make sure that the machine is in the right loading condition which is should be in the 100 kilogram loading position if if we change the 100 kilo, uh, the machine to 100 kilograms loading the display turns to hrb automatically this is the default setting in the sample while adjusting the table the machine has the automatic system to tell us by making a beep sound which will tell us that the sample is in correct position okay now we are ready for the testing and we can proceed with the testing this machine in this case has automatic starting system and now the machine will put the load for 15 seconds and then finally give you the value of hardness which is 88.7 HRV in this case so you can see how easy it was the machine after you make the beep sound it automatically applies the load for 15 seconds and gives you the hardness directly you don't have to do anything so it's in this case the first hardness reading was 88.7 HRB now after the first reading we are going to readjust the sample and make sure the indenter is in another position and we will take the second reading this time again we will make, rotate the table until we hear the beep sound yes now the machine is ready the machine will automatically apply the load for 15 seconds and give you the hardness reading after some time here now the test is almost now the machine is waiting and applying the load and now we have the value which is 90.6 HRB so 90.6 HRB the first value was 88 the second value was 90 what you have to do in your lab report is to take the average value for them okay so remember let me show you quickly all the lab report as well so if I show you in the Rockwell test which is here the material first one was steel the ball indenter size was 1 by 16 inch steel ball or steel sphere it's as written in the PowerPoint the load value we applied for steel was 100 kilograms the scale which automatically selected by the machine was HRB and now the hardness value will be the average so the first value was around 88 I want you to be exact value I don't do not um, it's maybe 88.7 and the second value was 90 divided by 2 which will give you the average value maybe 89 HRB so I want you to write the average values here it's, it's very simple in the same way you will do for the aluminium and brass so let's continue with aluminium and brass and also see how much how was the indentation marks on this for the steel sample this is the second reading in the Rockwell hardness we are we don't need to uh, measure the sample indentation by micrometer afterwards or microscope afterwards uh, and we can see the 
indentation marks here are very small and these are measured by the machine automatically by taking the depth of measurement for these indentation marks and we have the two indentation marks and the reading we have calculated let's move to the measurement of hardness rockwell hardness for the aluminum and brass samples okay now we are placing the brass sample in the machine which is non ferrous material while the indenter is the same type once we put the sample we will make sure the load now is in 60 kg because we here we need a lower load for non ferrous material once we have this we can see that the scale is automatically changed to HRF the next step is to adjust the table and make sure the sample is just touching the indenter in this case we can hear the beep sound once it's done yes now the test is starting automatically by the machine you can see the machine is applying a load of 60 kilogram for 15 seconds and then it will give us the hardness value of this brass sample here in this case we have 81.9 HRF as the hardness of brass sample let's repeat the same reading for another point on the brass sample so we'll just readjust the sample to another location and make sure the table is merely touching the sample here you hear the beep sound and the test starts automatically in this case the test uh, the machine is applying the load on this sample and here we will have the hardness reading for brass sample it's the second hardness reading in this case we are having a value of 94.6 HRF now we are repeating the test for aluminum sample this time we will keep the machine in the same scale which is the 1 by 16 inch indenter and 60 kilograms load which is the HRF scale we will adjust the table so the sample is touching the, uh, uh, the indenter and now the machine will start the test automatically to give us the hardness rating of aluminium sample so now brass finished we are moving on to aluminium here in this case the hardness of aluminium sample is coming out to be 78 point again we noticed aluminium was having less hardness than the brass interesting 7 HRF and now we will repeat the same for the second position of the same sample in order to have and uh, two different re uh, two readings in the same sample once the machine is almost touching the sample we will start the test and the machine will calculate the hardness of aluminium sample in this case in this case the hardness value is measured to be 81.0 HRF and now we have measured all the three samples let's have a look at the indentation marks for three of them okay these are the three samples measured for the Rockwell hardness testing. We can see the indentation marks here are very small, but this are automatically measured. The hardness value is automatically measured by the machine. This was the steel sample. Now we are looking here at the aluminum sample. We can see the aluminum indentation marks here, and this is the brass sample. So I want you to take the final pictures of the sample after the test from this part of the video that's showing very clearly and also make sure you circle them with red spots in order to know this is the area you take the hardness test and now we have completed the rockwell hardness testing thank you. okay thank you so much this was the rockwell hardness testing uh, the rockwell hardness testing is a little bit uh, simpler than the brunel in the brunel you had to do a lot of calculation but rockwell was easy once you are done with the test you are able to answer the questions which are given here and inshallah you will be able to do fine in this lab report but there is one question in the here in the discussion part which says estimate the tensile strength of all materials you test how do you do it so how do you find the tensile strength of any material using hardness so hardness is related to the tensile strength if I tell you hardness is related to the tensile strength by a formula this is the empirical formula material tensile strength and its hardness are related the stronger it means harder so if the tensile strength is high it means it will be a very hard material the hardness number can be converted to sig sigma ts 
or you you also called it sigma uts ultimate tensile strength the highest point on the stress strain curve is given by a formula called 3.4 multiplied by bhn so the bernal hardness number so so in order to find the tensile strength you will only look at the bernal hardness and uh, you take this bernal hardness number you multiply it by 3.4 that's it and that's your tensile strength here you can also see here the Brennell hardness number if it is 242 it will be Rockwell hardness C by 23 and it will be Vickers which is another measurement type we did not do in this lab today will be 255 and the tensile strength will be 820 so there is something called conversion tables which help you jump from Rockwell to Brennell to tensile to another scale and it gives you a relative number it is just like you have the centigrade you have the Fahrenheit you have the Kelvin and there is tables you can change from one to another using that conversion tables so the online conversion tables for hardness values are given here I want you to use them to answer the questions given in the lab report if you need anything else if you want to learn more about hardness and how well, what is Rockwell hardness what is Brunel hardness you can look at these links and uh, these are good resources for these tests but moreover um, um, generally we covered the Rockwell and Brunel hardness uh, all in very detail and we looked at all the points including the how the testing is done and how different loads are selected for each one of them thank you for attending this lab session and if you have any question I'm here to answer Otherwise, we are done with this lab session. I have recorded the responses you have given in the chat and thank you for this. Inshallah, you will get your lab uh, participation score very soon. And I want you to do all the best uh, and do your best for this last lab report and give, uh, give me good lab reports. Thank you and uh, well, uh, thank you for attending this lab session. Thank you.